If you like gaming on the go, there's a few handhelds to choose from in the market right now. For the upcoming edition of the Asus ROG Ally, this guy, there's a new challenger in the mix. Also, if you want to check out our review of the ROG Ally, we've done a full review which you can watch either here or in the link in the description below. But there is one question that often came up when we brought the ROG Ally around. How does the ROG Ally compare to the Nintendo Switch? It was surprising since we expected people to compare this with the Steam Deck rather than the Switch. But given the Switch's popularity, we decided to do a breakdown of which one you should get if you're considering a handheld gaming console. Hi, I'm CJ from Yugatech, and we're gonna check out the ROG Ally and the Nintendo Switch. Before we get started, do note that this is not a direct comparison between the ROG Ally and the Nintendo Switch. Instead, we want to give you an idea of what each device can do, along with their advantages and disadvantages. So the ROG Ally and the Nintendo Switch have almost little in common apart from them both being handheld gaming consoles. They all have different price points, operating systems, and even how you use them. For example, the Switch has removable Joy-Cons, making it easier to play split-screen or local multiplayer games with friends. If you buy more Joy-Cons, you can have more people play on one device. Heck, you can even have up to 8 players when playing Super Smash or Mario Kart. Meanwhile, the ROG Ally can't do that, well, at least not like the Switch. You can pair it with Xbox or PlayStation controllers via Bluetooth, making it possible to play games like Tekken, Street Fighter, and even racing games with a split-screen option. But for the most part, the Ally is aimed for single-player as opposed to the Switch. In terms of portability, they're equally matched. The ROG Ally is bigger in terms of size compared to the Switch, but not by much. Despite being bigger, it's not that heavy too, meaning you won't get tired of playing it for hours. But the great thing about the Switch is that you can detach the Joy-Cons from the display, which isn't possible with the ROG Ally. This makes it easier to sit back and relax with the Switch since you can set up the display on the table or its stand. You can also dock the Switch to the TV, play games on the big screen. As for the ROG Ally, you're forced to hold it whenever you're using it. Well, that's unless you're connected to a Bluetooth mouse, keyboard, or controller. But at that point, you should have considered buying a gaming laptop instead. There is one advantage that the ROG Ally has over the Switch. The operating system. The Switch uses Nintendo's propriety system, meaning you can only play Nintendo games. Meanwhile, the ROG Ally runs on Windows. This means you can effectively install almost any game or even software that you can on a PC or laptop. This also opens up the opportunity of using emulators, so you can play older titles on PlayStation 1, 2, and more. Not to mention, the ROG Ally offers more titles to play with. The Ryzen Z1 Extreme chip makes it more capable of playing the most intense graphic games, like Cyberpunk and more. Unlike the Switch, you're not just limited to Nintendo titles. On the other hand, the ROG Ally can't play Switch-exclusive titles like Mario Kart or the new Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. So if you want to play these Nintendo games, you're left with no choice but to go with the Switch. So you do have advantages and disadvantages no matter which unit you choose. While you can play more games on the ROG Ally, you probably need to find a power outlet or bring a power bank with you often. One of the weak links of the ROG Ally is the battery, which doesn't last long especially when you're playing in performance mode and 120Hz refresh rate. For our experience with the ROG Ally, the battery can drain from 100 to 44% after an hour and 15 minutes of playing Honkai Star Rail. Meanwhile, the battery on the Switch can last much longer than that. The Switch we used in this video is my personal unit I've had since 2020. And surprisingly, it outlasts the ROG Ally in terms of battery life. With that, you won't have to worry about finding a power socket or bringing a power bank with you often when you bring the Switch around. So, you already have a good idea of the pros and cons of both the Switch and the ROG Ally. But there's just one last topic we have to talk about, the price. The standard Nintendo Switch currently retails for 13,995 pesos on Data Blitz. It also comes with freebies such as stuff in glass film, rubber plugs, and a dustproof kit. Even if you do get the newer Switch OLED, it's priced at 16,295 pesos. Not to mention, you can also buy more Joy-Cons and it'll still be more affordable than the ROG Ally. 
ASUS has yet to reveal the price of the ROG Ally here in the Philippines, but in the US, pre-orders start at 700 US dollars, or roughly 39,000 pesos. It's a lot more expensive, but you do get more than just a handheld gaming console. The good thing about the ROG Ally is that you no longer have to pay for the games you already own, such as the ones in Steam and Battle.net. All you have to do is download them on the ROG Ally and you're good to go. On the Switch, you either have to buy the cartridge or you get them through the Nintendo eShop. Overall, if you want to play games with friends in person and enjoy Nintendo exclusive titles, then the Switch is the better choice. But if you want to play solo and be able to do other things aside from playing games, then the ROG Ally is the one for you. With all that on the table, which handheld do you think you're gonna get? The Nintendo Switch or the Asus ROG Ally? At the end of the day, it depends on your needs and the games you want to play. So that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed, do hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click that bell icon to be notified of future uploads. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and visit yugatech.com to stay updated with the latest tech news and reviews. Once again, this has been CJ, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!